Now on burst we're going to get to in a bit, uh, but I want to jump down here real quick to the inflate, deflate, expand, and contract section. There's some really cool stuff in here, and then I'll come back around to uh, on brushed. So let's go out of edit mode, hit Control N, and <laughs> let's go back to our trusty plain 3D. We're going to drag that out on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, and let's go ahead and down here underneath dynamic, let's turn on thickness. So uh, and also turn your smooth down to zero. So we just got a plane with some thickness uh, in our scene. So let's play around a little bit more with some of these options down here. So let's turn gravity off, let's turn floor collision off, and let's say I want to inflate this into a pillow. Now there's gonna be a few problems with this. Number one, let's say, okay, I have geometry here, let's go ahead and inflate it. And you know, on mass, this doesn't really matter, but we'll go ahead and turn that off as well. So I'm gonna go over here to inflate, and I'm gonna hit run simulation, and that plane is just gonna take right off. And you may be thinking, well, why isn't it inflating uh, on this geometry? And that's because two reasons. Number one, the surface normal is dictating what direction the inflate isn't going to go. So what inflate does, and then deflate does the opposite, is basically looks at the surface normal of this object and then goes and just follows that surface normal. To show you what a surface normal is, what I'm going to do is let's call this hit rename and then we'll call this pillow so I know to come back to it. Let's go out of edit mode, let's hit control N. Let's grab a poly mesh 3D, drag it on our canvas, let's go into edit mode. And the quickest way to get a plane in here is just to go to initialize, drop these numbers down to one and hit Q grid. That'll be a nice one by one by one or in Z versus case two by two by two unit plane. So with that, let's go into subtool here and we're gonna to go to append and we're just going to grab an arrow out of here. So we're gonna take this arrow, we're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, we're in transpose cloth, so B, T, R. So you're in regular transpose. And now we can hold down shift and rotate that 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and scale this down and we're gonna pull this forward and I'm gonna hold down control and alt. We're gonna unmask this back end and I'm just gonna pull that straight back to that plane. Essentially what we're gonna do is use a new function you guys don't know about, unless you skipped ahead, uh, which is micro poly. And essentially it's going to replace every single face on any object that we have selected with this object, which let's take this one here. Let's go to merge down. Always okay. So basically this right here is going to replace every single face on our object. And this is going to represent a surface normal. Uh, here's the face and here's that normal kind of shooting right off of that face. So when we go back to our pillow plane and we go down here to geometry, dynamic is already on, smooth is down to zero. Uh, you have this micro poly option now, there's a ton of really cool stuff you can do with micro poly, but just as a sneak preview, we're gonna turn that on. And if you want, you can choose chain mail and turn this into a little chain mail sheet and dynamics will run on it. Cloth hook will work on it, it's, it's, it's amazing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down control and we're gonna grab that little face with the arrow coming out of it. So essentially, and let's also turn our thickness down so we just see this plane. And we turn on polyframe, and let's turn off line so we can see this a little bit easier. You're going to see all the arrows, all the faces on this object are pointing in one direction. So what inflate does is tell ZBrush or tell the algorithm in ZBrush running the simulation, when I say inflate, look at the surface normal of that object and go straight out from that normal. If you don't have any, if all your surface normals are pointing in one direction, and you run an inflate simulation, they're just going to go in that direction. Now, if you go through here and you like use your move brush and you start bending and twisting which direction those arrows are pointing, so some are pointing this way and that way now, and we run the simulation, now they'll start uh, inflating in that, uh, in that direction. And deflate's just the opposite. You can say deflate and it'll deflate in that direction. So on deflate, if the surface normal is pointing this way and you have deflate, it's gonna go in the back, uh, this, away from the normal arrow direction. It's gonna go negative. So let's go ahead and turn micro poly off and turn our line back on in our polyframe option. So we have dynamic and we can turn up thickness, but again, this thickness is an actual geometry. It's not gonna push against this geometry. This geometry in the back, this dynamic, is just gonna follow that geometry that's driving it, the real geometry, and this is the dynamic geometry. So what we need to do is go down here and hit apply. That's gonna make this real geometry along with this. So this is both real. So now that we have real geometry on both sides, we're going to go over here to inflate. And now when we run the simulation, it's going to inflate. It's basically going to push this face, these faces away from this face. And as that happens, as these, because it's following the surface normal out here, these ones in the middle are going to go straight out. And then all of a sudden these ones are going to go, I have to turn because these ones over here are pulling me uh, against me. And then all of a sudden they're going to start, uh, go back to our 
dynamic turn down thickness. Let's turn our micropoly back on, turn our line back off. And now you can see those, those arrows are going all in all sorts of directions. So they're following that surface normal all the way around. So now when we run the simulation, uh, it's just going to inflate and they're all going to kind of be pushing out from a central location, just following their surface normal. So that's just kind of a visual representation of that. So we'll turn our micropoly back off and now we have a pillow. Now, like I mentioned before, deflate is just the opposite. So we can run the simulation and it'll, all the surface normals will kind of go collapse in on each other and it'll deflate. Now you may notice there's also X, Y, and Z options on all of these. An easier way to look at this instead of doing it on a complex object, let's go out of edit mode. Let's hit control N and let's <laughs> one more time. Let's go back to the plane 3d, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3d and let's look at these options and we'll switch back to a startup material here or in your case, Macap gray. Let's go down here to dynamic and we'll keep smoothing this up at two for now. So inflate and deflate we know follows the surface normal. Uh, let's talk about expand. Expand doesn't look at the surface normal. It looks at the relationship between edges and goes, oh, I see an edge over here. I want to expand away from it. And you know that if it's looking to expand, if it's looking to increase the distance between these edge relationships, that's going to also increase the surface area. So expanding is going to want to increase surface area. And the cool thing is you can do it in a designated axis. So if we turn polyframe off here and we do expand and XYZ, and you know what, let's get some smaller wrinkles. Let's uh, let's turn smooth subdiv down to one and let's hit control D or hit that divide button. And then we'll go ahead and run the simulation on expand. And the more times you do that, if we hit control D one more time, there you go. Your wrinkles are just gonna get smaller and smaller. So you can see in this simulation, we're running an expand and it's looking at the edge relationships and going, I want to get away from these other edges. But, you know, as I get away from them, I also want to kind of maintain the surface area relationship. So as I'm kind of increasing the surface area, I'm kind of bunching up as well to kind of maintain those relationships. So it's kind of fighting with the dynamics in order to both expand the surface area and maintain the surface area. And you get uh, some beautiful wrinkles going on. So now going back to the X, Y, and Z, if we turn on our floor axes, uh, you're going to see Z, and this is world axes here. So Z is forward and back, X is left and right, Y is up and down. So when we turn the floor off here and we expand in the X only and hit run simulation, turn on expand and run. That's what you're going to get. That left and right axes, I guess go ahead and leave the floor on. That left and right axis over here, it's just expanding in that direction. You can also do the same thing in the Y axis with pretty predictable results. Now, here's the z-axis, front and back. And we go through here and we expand uh, in z and run the simulation, and what happens? Well, nothing, because this is on a simple plane. There is no real edge expansion or compression in the z-axis. All these lines are running across this 2D plane. So expanding in the z-axis on a plane isn't gonna do much. So in the instance of a 2D plane, y, x, and y, in running the simulation is going to do the exact same thing as X, Y, and Z because Z is not going to do much. Now that isn't the case when we go to other examples, but uh, just to kind of point that out on, and when you're playing with these things, playing it on a 2D plane just kind of simplifies things and axes and what the expectations are and what it's going to do. So here's another thing you can do before we go uh, to another object. Let's go ahead and mask this top part and have on mask off. So we don't want to touch this mask area. And now we go in here and let's say expand in the X direction. And just to get this run a little bit faster, let's drop down to subject level two. We'll get some broader wrinkles here. So now you're gonna see if you have a masked area, let's like say at the bottom of a dress or something, and you wanna get these nice, these nice kind of wrinkles here, you can expand in the X. If you wanna kind of bunch wrinkles along an axis, you can expand in the Y, and that'll kind of draw these wrinkles up. And if you wanna do it in both, of course, you now realize that X and Y are gonna give you that kind of expansion. Now we're gonna come back to a plane so let's go ahead and rename this. We can use it again. Test plane. And let's go ahead and swap out uh, to a 3D cylinder here. And let's say make poly mesh 3D. And I'm going to go down here to our poly groups. Say group by normals. So I'm going to hold down control shift and isolate this green part here. And then go to geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. Let's go ahead and divide this a few times. And one more time, we're going to mask this top part off here. And this time, 
let's expand in X, Y, and Z. Or you know what, let's just expand in Z. When we run this simulation now, something's actually gonna happen. Let's go over here also to dynamic, turn this on. And uh, yeah, let's have our smooth stuff dip up so we get some nice smooth wrinkles. So now, because our object is in a flat plane, Z actually means something when we tell it to expand. It's gonna look at those edge relationships in the Z direction and expand. So in this case, we turn on X, Y, and Z on a cylinder and we run the simulation. Now you're gonna be getting Y expansion, X expansion, and Z expansion, and that's what the result that you're gonna get. If we take out the Y component and then just do X and Z, you're gonna get an, uh, kind of an interesting kind of wrinkle falling here. And if you just do it in the Y direction, again, you're gonna get uh, some really nice compression wrinkles uh, heading up. Now. Having said all this, remember, you can turn self-collision down, and that'll give you a slightly different result. Firmness, you can also drop that down. So while you're doing these expansions and running the simulation, remember everything on here uh, plays a role in how this is going to affect the overall uh, final result. So, you know, again, go in here and play in this X and Y is going to give you this kind of result, and X and Z is going to give you that kind of result. So a lot of really cool stuff you can play around with here. Also, expand is again trying to expand the relationships between the edge geometry. Inflate's going to push along the surface normal. You can do both. So here you're going to see expand is allowing more surface area and inflate is pushing along that X, Y, and Z. So you can mix these things if you want to do X and Z and then inflate while you're doing that. You can get those long wrinkles here. And remember, you also have an amount. So if you want to really expand and just inflate a little bit, uh, play with these settings. And that way, the expand will affect the mesh more. And then inflate will come in behind it and just kind of inflate uh, as it's expanding. And again, inflate along those surface normals like we showed earlier. And we just got one more to talk about, and that's contract. And just like inflate and deflate have an inverse relationship, uh, expand and contract do as well. So when expands trying to push away from each other and it has the side effect of increasing surface area, uh, contracts going to do the opposite. It's going to want to decrease surface area. And of course, if we do, you know, just in the Y direction, it's going to pull up. And just in the Z direction, it's going to go front to back. So as you would expect, uh, if we go back to our test plane here, and let's say, you know, we do an expand in the X, Y, and Z. Oof, let's tame that amount down so we give it some more time to kind of fine tune the look we're going for. In fact, let's just do it to the whole plane. There we go. So now if I want to go through here and I want to smooth this out, contract could be a way to do that. If we do contract X, Y, Z, that'll go through and again, just kind of erase anything that we've done so far. In fact, if we go over here and we turn on the Z direction, uh, just like you would expect that, you know, Z is forward to back. If you turn uh, run simulation on, it's going to contract in that Z direction and kind of flatten uh, everything else out. So if you turn on self collision, it'll eventually flatten itself out into a, a sheet I would imagine. So that's one way or one thing to keep in mind when you're using contract, you know, the kind of results that you'll end up getting. And also remember, you don't have to use this run simulation. So if we go back up here, you know, let's just, we'll just drive back on this plane. Let's keep using this plane here. So we got this half of this plane mask. We hit W. Uh, we can still use, if you go to BTC to brush transpose cloth, uh, we can use this. You can see we're transposing this cloth this way and this way, and we have inflate turned on. If you have inflate turned off, it's just going to run our cloth simulation. It's going to kind of you know, move and bounce around and you can go in any camera axis if you want. You can even compress this down and as long as you don't have allow shrink turned on, you'll go ahead and get these compression wrinkles as well. So you can kind of control lateral compression uh, with transpose or hit Q, go to brush, cloth, nudge or move and you can actually use these to go ahead and determine which direction your wrinkles are going to go. So you have a lot of control over not only how it simulates, but how you want this cloth to move just by brute force, you know, moving it. But while you're doing that movement, you can also go in here and let's say we have expand turned on. We have a uh, move up here. Here's our gizmo. Uh, as I kind of wiggle it in this direction, it's going to start running this expand simulation. Remember, our simulation iterations are running on movement. So as long as our simulation is either going or we're moving this mesh, and in this case, we're using our gizmo to do it, it's going to be running whatever settings you have over here. If you have expand and inflate turned on, it's going to be expanding and inflating as that cloth is mo being moved on movement by this transpose 
uh, line. Alternatively, like we were doing cloth move earlier, if I just go over here and just wiggle in the corner, since I'm moving that mesh, you can see it's starting to inflate and starting to expand. Now we're getting a much different result, but just keep in mind, like, yeah, as you're using cloth sculpting brushes, even something like cloth pinch, which, you know, we'll get into this stuff later, you know, without any of this on, cloth pinch has this result. It kind of pinches uh, cloth inwards. However, if we have ex inflate and expand turned on, we'll put both these back at one, now what it's going to do is it's going to pinch, but all the cloth around it is going to start expanding and inflating because you're telling the simulation that's what you want it to do. Also, the direction you wiggle is also going to possibly influence the, the wrinkle direction or move if you're using like the move brush. So you have expand turned on and we'll just do expand in the Y direction. So when I'm doing this and I wiggle it, it's going to want to do that kind of Y expansion. However, if I wiggle this in the X direction, you're going to get some lines that kind of just crisscross a little bit. And in the Z direction, you know, you're going to get that result. So depending on which way you're wiggling or you're moving in the case of a brush or in case of, you know, a cloth pinch, that'll also kind of determine the wrinkles that you end up getting. Going back to our cylinder here, if we do an expand in the X and Z direction, and we use our gizmo with again with transpose cloth and we wiggle in the Y, that's the result we get. Wiggling in the X, eh, similar result. Wiggle in the Z, eh, probably a similar result. However, I think, you know, and it also depending on like if you, you know, do very small wiggles, you're just going to let that cloth simulation kind of run. So it's very similar to just letting the cloth simulation run, essentially. But now when we do it in the Z direction, you see we're introducing uh, a little bit of turbulence and same thing probably with the X direction. Eh, not as bad. It seems like Z direction actually gives you a little more turbulence across the surface. So if you're not looking for perfect wrinkles coming out, consider, you know, wiggling in an off axis and see if that gets you the result that you uh, want. Or even rotating. Uh, remember, it's not just wiggling in a direction. You know, and it also depends on how hard you wiggle in a direction. If you're just doing little tiny micro wiggles, that's essentially like just running a, a simulation. If you're doing big wiggles, uh, you're going to, you're obviously going to affect much more the direction of those wrinkles. And if you go in here and you rotate, obviously you're going to get more of a twisty simulation. And if you're rotating in this direction, uh, you know, the, the, the results are fairly predictable. You know, if, just like if you have a piece of cloth and you're you're turning it in one direction or another, um, you would expect it to bunch in one direction or another as well. And just for fun, let's go back to deflate here. And what deflate's telling it is to push in along these axes. So let's do an X and Z, and we'll just go through here and we'll just wiggle in the Y direction. And now we're deflating down to wrinkles here. But if we want to, we can also kind of twist it, and it'll still deflate. But now we'll get more of a twisted hanging result.